opponent's release got to a minus one has to pass expectations. It is regarded as one of the best, if not the best, Godzilla movie of all time. Now with Godzilla X Kong coming out, making a good amount of change in the box office, what is this saying? If a Japanese movie that costs between 10 to 15 million dollars, that's nowhere as much the Hollywood made. And if that movie with that budget can succeed, it is a Hollywood problem, not a movie problem, not a theater problem, it's a Hollywood problem. Why does an Indiana Jones movie cost $300 million to make? Avatar The Way of Water makes more sense with all that seems in mind. Indiana Jones, come on. The performance of Transformers Rise of the Beast is also a Hollywood problem. It's not that Transformers is going to want to. Both Transformers and Godzilla are simple concept franchises. And Transformers are more complex than Godzilla. So if Minus One can be a successful movie, that would be Rise of the Beast becoming the lowest grossing movie of, of the live action portion of the franchise. It is a Hollywood problem. Here is the pre release time of the movie, the release period of the movie, and the post release. Is the build up and the word of mouth fast? No. No matter how many people talk about the movie inside the fan base, that fan base cannot carry the success of these Hollywood films. Avengers and Infinity War and Endgame was an event because of the popularity that it earned over the year that anyone would like to go and see it. Even if a person wasn't a fan of the brand, it was an event. Just like Star Wars, Phantom Menace, and The Force Awakens made money because it was something to experience with everyone. If it does not have that, what might remains is at least how well the movie is made, but what if it don't have that? And if the movie does get high praise, make the popularity and boost the movie and help its box office performance. Will this movie have a long lasting post release period after the movie? Will people want to continue to participate in the movie and its long lasting effect? That it will benefit the future, like how the popularity of Into the Spider Verse ensured the box office for the cross of the Spider Verse. People became fans and then they want to tune in to the next part of the story. Godzilla Minus One had a good trailer, a good release, a great amount. It succeeded with where it needed to go and what it needed to do. On the other hand, with Rise of the Beast, it was average at best and at worst. We got a decent box office for its performance. Many people just seemed not to care. Everything was also adding up with its budget, with the CGI and whatnot. All of that hit back, something that Paramount didn't want. But ultimately, they wanted Transformers to do better. Far better than what Bumblebee got in its box office back in 2018. Yes, it made its budget back. Yes, that eventually, after its release, it was able to still get more money. But Paramount wanted more from this movie in the box office. Bumblebee's box office was $468 million. With a budget of $102 to $135 million. Bumblebee is more successful with this budget to its box office than Rise of the Beast with this budget to its box office. And I believe this movie just didn't have the popular build-up like Across the Spider-Verse, something people was waiting to see. After the first movie, Bumblebee was like a one-and-done sort of thing. Some people wanted more, but it wasn't like how people probably wanted more from what they got from Into the Spider-Verse. Barbie and Oppenheimer was an event, two movies that couldn't be more different. It was a marketing fortune, perpetuated by culture, and that ensured the success of those movies. Even though Christopher Nolan is already a well-known director of today, but that could not be said for Rise of the Beast, and his marketing gimmick was the Maximals, and the movie only delivered such a fraction with them. They were fine, but they were not phenomenal. They could have easily been replaced. They were not really fleshed out to the best of the movie's abilities. With such a title like Rise of the Beast, People expected more to see with the beast. One thing to just add on to the movie not being as successful as it should is The Last Night in General. The reception of Michael Bay's Transformers movies was on a continuous decline and The Last Night was the final blow. It made $605 million plus compared to Age of Extinction making $1.1 billion. But that was because of China. Bumblebee brought redemption, but it was not enough. It just isn't like it used to be. Because Rise of the Beast copied certain things from Michael Bay Transformers, many people saw it as generic and flat. 
and I can see that for myself and try to replicate that Lorenzo D. Bumbunner Ventura said that people wanted to see more action. Now here's the conundrum, and this is the greatest conundrum that has been on this franchise. People want to see more Transformers, but it gets more and more expensive the more you put a lot of emphasis on the robots. So the humans are filler between the robots, and that's the conundrum. But the seven live-action Transformers need to be was a Bumblebee like them, not another Bumblebee movie, but similar to scale, tone, and budget, because people are already willing to take that kind of direction. People praised it, and when Lorenzo D. Bumbunner and True was trying to say that folks wanted more of Michael Bay live-action action, the movie didn't deliver on either, on the sort of direction, or on the action. The action was inferior in Rise of the Beast in comparison to Michael Bay's action. So it wound up serving nobody. It only served those who just wanted more Transformers. And it succeeded to a degree. We got more Transformers in screen time. But the action was less exciting. In the Bumblebee movie, people got a clear depiction of Bumblebee. Because he was a single character. If you can build your universe on stuff like that, it will work. I believe that sort of thing can help this franchise succeed. The Bay films, especially the latest movies, did not provide enough continuity for what came before. Everything just went to the junkyard. But that's because Michael Bay probably didn't even want to really make those movies. The third one was supposed to be his last one. But Paramount's greed, seeing how these Transformers movies succeed in the box office, with Dark Moon being the highest grossing Transformers movie of all time, Hasbro and Paramount saying more. And it happened the second time. A little bit less, but it cost a billion dollars. The Transformers Age of Extinction. But people hated that movie. I don't personally hate it, but a lot of people was just getting tired. The last night was just insulting in almost everything it had. It had some good moments, but those are very, very few and far between. It's like, if the movie doesn't care, then why should the audience? Now, Stephen Cable Jr. really gave this interest into what this movie was, and that's commendable. But what happened? How does Unicron become underwhelming? It's Unicron. And that's what I mean about having what is necessary be given the proper layout. Unicron was nerfed in the movie, and his impact wasn't deep at all. He was supposed to destroy worlds. But the heroes, he got rid of them. The day is one. I mean, shoot. In the G.I. Joe Transformers crawl, so he probably won't even mention him. He's not going to be in the movie with all that money to spend. They just don't have it to just put on everybody. Probably won't even see the Maximals. And that's what I mean. You must put your resources for certain elements and not just spread them across. I have not seen Godzilla Minus One. But off the trailer alone, I can see a easy premise that works. The movie is following World War II. And you will have the Japanese people having to face against Godzilla. The situation is dire for them. So people are already convinced that this will not be no nonsense of a film. And if people can detect a good film, they are willing to see it. Good movies win. You shouldn't need bait. You shouldn't need bait like Unicron or the Maximals to get people excited for the next Transformers movie. Some people are already convinced that, hey, at least there's no Michael Bay. But I can tell when I was watching the trailers that... The Maximals, certain characters, wasn't going to have that much screen time. When you see little emphasis on the robots in that trailer, you can already tell that. I, I'm, I'm all too aware of this. I'm all too familiar. I've seen the Michael Bay movies. After the last night, I'm all too aware of that. I was having a feeling, and it turned out to be true. And for a side note, Generation 1 and Beast Wars do not mix.